Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, the Torfa session. Our presenter for today for this session is uh, Baptiste, uh, who will show us how to automate repetitive tasks by using bots in SAP process automation. So, without further ado, Baptiste, thank you very much for joining, and over to you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Antonio. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Betty Santonay. I'm part of the process automation team. And today I will show you how you can create a great automation uh, to automate your processes. So during this session, uh, we will see what are automations uh, inside the SAP process automation. Uh, we will see how we can create automations uh, easily with the recorder. Uh, and then uh, I will uh, show you the new agent, uh, which is called Agent 3, which is our new data for the desktop agent. So let's start right now. What are automations? Uh, within SAP process automation, uh, we have an artifact which is called uh, automation. Uh, and this artifact uh, is based on the robotic process automation technology. Uh, so some bots uh, can do some actions, tasks uh, for you uh, automatically. Uh, this technology uh, in general accelerates uh, the digital transformation of the, uh, all business processes by automatically uh, doing the actions, uh, the tedious actions, um, so that the employees, the human workers uh, can concentrate on more uh, high value tasks. This technology uh, is using, uh, can be used uh, in two modes. The first one is the unattended mode and the second one in, is the attended mode. And within SAP process automation, we can uh, use both modes. So the first one, the unattended mode, lets you um, automate your process entirely. Uh, meaning that the robot will do all actions for you, no need um, for a human to supervise uh, the actions done by the bot. And then we have the attended mode, uh, which is used to automate a process, and uh, the robot can work with the human. So, for example, if the robot does not know what to do with some data, the human can uh, help the robot to uh, do some decision. So this is uh, the technology uh, behind automations within SAP process automation. Um, how these automations can deliver business value for you? Um, first, it improve uh, the operation. Uh, as I said earlier, you uh, can concentrate on tasks which uh, have more uh, high value. Um, and for repetitive and tedious tasks, you can let a robot work for you. Um, we can increase the service quality for, um, for your company with this bot. Uh, it's totally compliant with your infrastructure. Uh, no need to change anything. Um, our bots can run on all uh, different environments, uh, whatever your infrastructure is. We can increase the compliance, um, for example, to maintain uh, some documents for audits. Um, and the, another point which is very important with um, the automation is uh, the reduction of human errors. Uh, the human can do some errors uh, when manipulating some data, for example, uh, where the bot will uh, don't um, do errors. And finally, uh, you can have a quick uh, return on investment uh, because a bot can be developed um, within few weeks. We will see uh, this later. Um, and uh, it can be available uh, very quickly. A typical use case uh, for this kind of uh, robot, um, if you have some tedious process uh, and repetitive tasks, you can automate uh, these processes. 
So within uh, SAP process automation, you have this um, automation artifact. So here we can see in this picture that it's inside a uh, process, but you can also create automations uh, without processes. Um, so the bots will be triggered by the user. So manually, the user will uh, click on the agent to run his automation. You can also uh, use the unattended mode. So the automation is triggered automatically based on the time. Uh, you can also do some API calls. Uh, so you hit a URL and uh, the bot starts to work. Um, within SAP process automation, um, you can also inside your processes uh, create some automations. So that during your process, if some tasks need to be done, uh, the robots can, can do them. For example, here the collect of data is automatic. Uh, the sort of the data are, is also automatic. And then uh, we send uh, the results uh, for an improvement. You can automate a large panel of applications, web, uh, Windows application, SAP applications. Um, basically, all applications you have on your computer can be automated. You can speed up the execution of your processes. Um, for example, if you need to collect the data, a robot will be faster than a human. Um, same for the sorting. As a human, I can, I don't know, take a few days to collect the data. Uh, because I have other tasks to do during the day. Here, the robots can do them within minutes. And uh, yeah, as I said, the bots can work with or without a process. Uh, it's not a problem. Um, so if you don't need all the process, you can still use automation. So now we will see how we can create um, the automation using the recorder. So within SAP process automation, uh, we have this tool, which is called the recorder. It lets you create your automation faster. Um, it detects all actions uh, that you do on your application. Um, and then uh, you just need to execute the steps you, know, you want to automate. So for example, click on this application, uh, fill this field. Um, all these actions are recorded. Uh, so your bot will do the same uh, during his execution. Some key features about this recorder. Um, the capture of the screens uh, which are needed during the execution of your automation can be automatic. Uh, as soon as you change the screen within your application, uh, the recorder is able to uh, capture them, detect them, uh, and store them inside your project. If you already used um, the automation artifacts uh, and the application artifacts, you know that you need to capture one by one each screen. And with the recorder, um, all these actions are done automatically. The recorder um, can handle various activities. Um, you can set a value inside the field. You can retrieve a value um, from a form or any other web page. Uh, you can click on buttons uh, and other actions. All these actions are recorded and then uh, they will be uh, available in your automation. And then uh, you have an easy export to uh, the studio of all the applications you captured and all actions you did. So how it works, um, let's go to uh, my lobby. So this is my lobby. Uh, where I can create a new business process. Oops, sorry. So first I need to uh, give a name to my project. Uh, so here, uh, let's call it Zimo Recorder. And here it's creating a new uh, process automation project. So once created, uh, a new tab is opening with the, the studio. And from this view, I can uh, create several things. Um, we can create automation, full process, 
uh, some forms, all uh, all artifacts that uh, you need during the execution of your process. So here uh, I would like to automate um, an application which is called Rose uh, Orders. So this is uh, the application. Um, and uh, I would like to, uh, for example, click on an order, retrieve the name, um, and then uh, let's say set it uh, here in this search bar. So here uh, we will work on a very easy use case, uh, easy meaning uh, easy to understand. Uh, of course, uh, you can do the same on a more um, complex applications, on more complex uh, processes. It's not a problem. Uh, so here, uh, uh, sorry, I would like to start from this page. So I can uh, go back to my studio. Uh, I can click on the create button and uh, to use the recorder, I need first to um, use the application artifact. So by clicking on this artifact, you can see that uh, the studio is detecting all the screens uh, I have on my uh, computer. So here uh, he found um, the studio, sorry, found some uh, applications which are open on my computer and especially this browser orders uh, website. So when I click on the uh, night time in the list, I can see the preview of my application in the middle and on the right, I have some options. Uh, I can launch the recorder. I can capture the application. So if you want to do these actions manually, this is the option you will uh, use. But uh, on my side, I want to launch the recorder. So I need to uh, provide an application name. So by default, um, the, um, the, the title of the website is retrieved. Uh, the technology is web um, because uh, as I said, we can automate uh, various uh, kind of applications. So sometimes uh, it will be web. Uh, but it can be uh, SAP GUI applications, um, UI5 applications, uh, UI automation uh, applications, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, so I'm ready to start my automation. So I will hit the record button. By doing this, some SDK packages, which are uh, important for the automation, are added automatically uh, to my project. And here I have now access to this recorder. So this is the recorder for now. You can see it's empty uh, because I need to start it. Um, so let's do it uh, right now. I can start to um, record my screen. So as you can see, the recording is, um, is live. The automatic capture mode uh, is also enabled, uh, meaning that if I change the screen, uh, the, um, the new screen will be automatically added to this list. I have a few options uh, here. Uh, I can um, use the manual capture mode. I can use the capture and over and other um, parameters. But uh, let's keep things simple. Um, I started my uh, recorder. The browser orders page is um, detected and well captured. And now I can start to execute some actions. So let's say I want to click on this urgent order. So I click directly on uh, the application. And as you can see, a uh, new activity has been detected. Click on um, Tortuga Restaurante. So here is just the name because I clicked here. Uh, so now in my process, I want to retrieve this name. And um, it wasn't possible earlier before, but now with this uh, new recorder, we have this uh, magic button, which is used to get um, to get some data uh, from your application. So if I can, I can click on it. Sorry, and here you can see now when I hover my mouse on my application, uh, I have I have uh, this um, rectangle, this highlight on the element. Um, so for example, here I want to retrieve the uh, name. So what I did, I over, uh, I hovered the name. I hit control plus alt, 
uh, killed. And now I have the get activity, which has been added. And this name can change. Um, if I choose another order, uh, it will be another name. Uh, it's not a problem for the studio uh, because here, as you can see, name is a variable. So the automation, the bot will know that this value needs to be uh, collected, uh, but it can be, it can change. Um, this is the the output variable of the get activity. So now the get is done, I can disable this mode. So when I over, now I have access to the application, so I can continue. So now let's say I want to close this panel. The click is well detected. And here I would like to search for, um, we said uh, Tortuga Restaurante. Oh, sorry, I switch my keyboard. Uh, and here I click. Okay, so here is the set. I just removed uh, the click uh, outside of the field uh, that I did. Um, if you record some actions that um, uh, is not needed, you can remove them uh, with this uh, with this icon. So here I set the search field to Tortuga Restaurante, uh, but in fact I don't want to. Um, search for this. I want to search for um, the name I retrieved here. So what can I do is remove this field entirely and click on it again. And now I have a list uh, of suggestions uh, just below my, uh, my field uh, with all variables uh, which have been captured by the recorder. So here uh, it's simple. I have only one variable, which is called name. So I can click on it. And now my automation will uh, retrieve this name uh, on this step, uh, whatever the name is, and set the same name in the search field. And with this um, technique of get and set, you can um, automate a large panel of processes. Um, okay, um, I can do more actions, but um, yeah, it should be good for, for a quick demo. Uh, so I'm done. Uh, when you want to stop the recording, you just need to hit the stop button. Here, you still have the possibility to change um, some recorded actions. So for example, um, here I can rename my this variable, uh, I can change this set uh, field, and of course I can still remove uh, some uh, some actions which have been recorded. Uh, but on my side, uh, I'm pretty okay with this flow, so I can hit the export button. And as you can see, the studio automatically creates um, all artifacts which are needed to execute the automation I recorded. Uh, so the recorder, <coughs> which is opened on my uh, local computer, is sending all information to uh, my studio. And once done, I can see in the list of artifacts that now I have one automation, which is pretty similar uh, to what we saw. Uh, first, I click uh, on the element, then I can uh, get the name. I can close the panel and I can set the, the field. Here, two more activities uh, are added, the start and the close of the application. Um, we can see also the application, uh, which has been automatically uh, added to uh, the list of uh, available applications. So everything is well set. Uh, here, no need to, uh, to do um, updates. Sometimes it can happen. Um, to to change the criteria, etc. So let's go back to our automation. Um, here, really quickly, I uh, created this uh, automation, and I can directly test it. So, for example, I will close the initial um, application, and I can uh, run uh, the the debugger to test my automation. So here, uh, the studio is communicating with my desktop agent, which is installed uh, locally. 
uh, you will, uh, I will show you the agent. And now the automation uh, is executed. So first we start the web page. Then uh, the click will be done on the element. Uh, here it's invisible for us, but the get has been done. Uh, the set has been done as well. Uh, and then we close the application. <coughs> so here I created a small automation uh, within a few minutes. Uh, with the recorder, it's very easy and um, quick to create automation. Uh, now, what if I want to uh, change some activities, some parameters, or add uh, other actions? I don't need to record again all my uh, process. I can directly go to this automation. And here on the right, I will have a list of activities. Uh, the list of activities um, is pretty big when you have uh, some SDK. So the first SDK is I have here uh, underscore core. It contains all um, main activities that can be used inside your uh, automation. So here, for example, I can add a log message to my automation. And uh, change the parameter. So let's say at the beginning, I want to write start. Uh, so, so like this, I can uh, improve my automation, add uh, actions that I forget to record, for example. Uh, and uh, I can um, add many, many actions. We have also some uh, other SDKs. So you can go to the settings of your project, which is on the which is the button on the top right. You can go to dependencies, and here, as you can see, uh, the recorder already added uh, some SDKs. So the original one, the core, uh, Excel UI5 because it was a SAP UI5 application, and uh, ARP Web because it was uh, also a web application. We have uh, also uh, other dependencies. Uh, so depending of uh, what you want to automate, uh, you can add some um, SDKs into your project. Uh, it means that you will have access to uh, more and more activities. So for example, you can add the PDF SDK uh, and you will have uh, some new activities to uh, automatically read uh, some data inside PDF file. Um, so yeah, we, we are good uh, with the demo. Uh, you can now uh, start to create your automation uh, very quickly with the recorder. Um, of course, you can do these steps um, manually, uh, but of course it will take uh, more time to, uh, to add all these activities, uh, capture the screens, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, I uh, my mouse. Okay, so um, now let's uh, talk about the new agent three. Uh, so previously we used uh, what is called the agent two, and now we made a new update, uh, the agent three, which is now based on Electron GS technology. Uh, and uh, we made some big improvements for this uh, new release. Here is uh, a screenshot of the new desktop agent. So for those who uh, already played with the agent too, uh, you can see a lot of uh, differences uh, and a big improvements in terms of de design, but also in terms of actions which are possible to do. Uh, here are the key features of the new Agent 3. We have the Smart Update uh, feature. So the Smart Update feature lets you update all your agents uh, automatically. For example, we deliver a new agent version each month. Uh, each month we have a new release, uh, so a new version of the um, uh, on-premise component is available. Uh, previously, you had to uninstall your old uh, version, then install the new uh, version. It took some time to do these uh, actions. 
now with the smart updates um, from the lobby, you can decide to upgrade all your agents um, without any uh, user action. For example, if a new version is available, um, the next time I connect uh, to my uh, computer, the agent will uh, show a pop-up saying that the new agent version is available. And then uh, I will have the choice to install it right now or uh, later in the day. Uh, later in the day is at around uh, 6 p.m. We have, uh, with this um, smart update, we simplify the, um, oops, sorry, we simplify the, um, the first download and the installation of the agent. Um, previously, you had to go uh, to another website to download your uh, new agent version. Now, everything is done from the lobby. So from the lobby, you can create your projects, you can create, uh, you can manage your automations, and now you can also download uh, the, the agent for the first time. We have a faster project switching. So for those who used the agent tool, um, it was quite long, uh, or at least it took some time to switch between different projects. Uh, the desktop agent uh, had to download the new package, restart, and after the restart, the new package, the new project uh, was uh, available. Now, with the agent 3, no need to restart uh, the agent. Uh, everything is done automatically, and um, it's faster uh, than uh, the agent 2. We use the modern technologies uh, and architecture to build this uh, new agent. So as I said, we use uh, now ElectronJS technology to build this new agent. Uh, we have a better UI for version management of your project. Uh, and we introduced the RDP manager. Uh, we will talk about it uh, later. Uh, because it was um, a big feature of the agent too. Um, what is it? Previously, you had to uh, enter your password and uh, username of your Windows session uh, inside the desktop agent so that the desktop agent uh, was able to automatically unlock the session for you. Uh, and this action is needed, uh, especially if you want to do specific actions, uh, such as mouse click, uh, keystroke, and uh, other graphical actions. Uh, now we introduce the RDP manager. The RDP manager is a new mod which is available in your desktop agent, uh, which lets you uh, keep, um, keep alive uh, other Windows stations. So now the Windows session will not lock by itself. Uh, it will stay alive so that if some graphical actions are needed by uh, the bot on the VM, uh, it will be possible to uh, do these actions. Uh, you just need to have uh, one machine uh, with the RDP um, manager mode enabled. Uh, and then uh, on this machine, uh, through the agent, you can connect uh, other agents. So uh, other agents, meaning that um, if you want to unlock a session uh, or do graphical actions on another server, you can link them so that this agent in RDP Manager will be able to keep uh, the other session alive. So this is uh, the, the new concept of the RDP manager. Um, so yeah, here you will uh, find some information about the agent three. Um, we have made a great uh, blog post. I definitely recommend it to you. Um, we have, uh, of course, an official documentation about this agent three. Uh, and because the RDP manager is, um, let's say, quite complex uh, feature, I will not be able to show you uh, right now. 
uh, that you can find in our documentation uh, all uh, information uh, which are needed. Okay, so let's do a tour of uh, the new agent. So it's uh, still in the sys tray. So here you can see we have a, a new icon and this is the on screen of my agent. So you, for those who are familiar with the agent too, you will, you will find all uh, buttons and actions which were possible with the agent too uh, inside this new interface. So this is the home screen. I can see uh, the agent mode. Um, is it in design mode, attended mode, unattended mode? Here, very quickly, I can uh, now have this information. I know what is the tenant uh, which is connected to this agent. Uh, I have all the events that happened on the agent. So for example, here, I had a lot of uh, internet disconnections. So the agent uh, logged 22 um, errors uh, because of the missing internet connection. I have some info when the project starts or, um, or stops, and uh, I have the running. Um, with the second tab, uh, you will see all the projects, all the bots uh, you built and which are available uh, for the user. Uh, so here I'm in design mode, so I can see the project. Um, but you will find a list with all available uh, bots uh, you build. Uh, I can retrieve some information about my agent version, my project uh, version, and so on. So it's needed, especially uh, for debug purpose. We have, of course, the settings uh, of uh, the agent. So we have some system settings. You can change uh, the theme of your agent, the language, uh, you can uh, change the mode. So as I said, we have the attended mode to run uh, on your machine. Um, you have the unattended mode, uh, so that most of the time uh, it's triggered automatically on a virtual machine. And finally, if I want to use the RDP manager mode, I can activate uh, this new mode. Uh, here, we just uh, did the demo earlier, uh, so it's why it's in design mode. Uh, up, uh, we have uh, the history. So here in history, we can retrieve all the events um, that have been made uh, to this agent. So for example, uh, a few minutes ago, I started a new project. Uh, I, just a few seconds before the, my agent was connected to the tenant. Um, and I can retrieve easily the error. So as you can see here, I had today a lot of uh, connection loss. Um, you have the runnings uh, and you have the info. Uh, so the info is all the information with project started, project started, etc. I can change the tenant. Uh, so you can uh, filter your tenants. Uh, so most of the time you have only one tenant, but as you can see, I have a lot of tenants. And you can retrieve the tracer, uh, the tracer recorder. So with the agent two, we introduced a new tool uh, which was called the uh, trace collector. The trace collector is uh, very useful uh, for debug purpose. Um, for example, sometimes you have some troubles executing your automation. Uh, uh, you can open an incident to the SAP support and we will ask you some traces. Now the tracer is uh, inside the desktop agent. So it's very easy to record the traces from this button. Uh, you go to the tracer recorder. Um, you have a disclaimer. I understand the disclaimer. And here you retrieve all the components uh, that can be tracked with the technical events that they are sending. Uh, and you can then start the tracing and uh, reproduce your issue so that uh, the error uh, is well logged uh, in technical uh, log files. So here, is the new agent three. Now, how you can install it uh, very easily. I will show you now um, in few steps. So on your side, uh, you may not have the same UI 
because we already downloaded several versions, etc. But I will show you um, how to do this. So when you are on your lobby, you can go to the settings tab, uh, the, the last one, and on the left, uh, you can go to agent updates. So agent updates is the new tab which lets you install all the agent version you want. So for example, here you can see we installed, uh, we already installed three versions. The last one being the 3.8. So few, um, I will try to move this. Few settings uh, before I think this is. Um, when you first come to this page, you will have a link to uh, a portal. Uh, here, I can retrieve this link uh, by changing the settings. Uh, it's called the RBST portal. You can go uh, inside this portal. And you need to create a user. So for example, I would create a new user. Test uh, installation. Uh, okay, I will copy it. You can, uh, it's too long, sorry. Uh, agent uh, DLT. I will copy this one. You can add a user. And then once your user is created, you can generate uh, a new token. So you need to click on this generate button. It will show you a token uh, that you need to copy. Uh, here, I will not do it. Uh, but once you have these two information, the user and the associated uh, token, you can go back to the settings. And here you can uh, put the name uh, of uh, the user you selected and then the secret uh, ID you copied. By doing this, you can then go to the download page and uh, you will be able to download and install the new agent. Once it's done, you have a list of all agent version and from there you can uh, decide to activate the, the automatic updates for this version. So here, for example, if I activate it, um, all the agents which are connected to this uh, lobby will be uh, downgraded this time to the 3.7 version. So here from one page, I can decide to upgrade or downgrade all my agents, which is very convenient. Um, so here, here, as I said, you can find more info on this new agent three. Uh, and you can already install it um, tonight if you want. Uh, all I present, all, uh, all things, sorry, I presented to you uh, today are already available in your lobby. Um, then we can uh, talk a little bit about the learnings we offered. Um, so this session was very quick uh, and it's uh, not sufficient to understand very well all uh, these artifacts. So you can uh, follow some learning journeys and live sessions which are um, led by SAP experts uh, and uh, then prepare for certification. You can benefit from uh, the SAP Ticket offer. Uh, you can, uh, with the SAP community, connect with experts. Uh, you can share your knowledge with other users, ask your questions, uh, and uh, you can network with other participants in the group for SAP Ticket, uh, and you can join the SAP learning groups uh, so that if the, during your learning process you have some questions, you can uh, find some answers. I recommend you to check this link, learning.sap.com slash decad, and you will have access to a lot of uh, information and learning uh, to better understand how you can automate your processes. It was uh, a quick session. <laughs> it's already done. Um, Antonio, let's Thank move. Yes. To... Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Baptiste, uh, for all the information that he, that he shared with us. Uh, that was uh, quite insightful. Like, um, I wasn't familiar with the desktop agent three and all the new, not just the new UI that it has, but all the 
the functionality that it has. It looks way better than desktop agent too. So, and let me see. So we don't have any questions, unfortunately, but I do have a couple of questions. So, um, so you, did I understand correctly that uh, the desktop agent three is available now to customers? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can already okay. go to your SPA tenant uh, yeah. and you go to the settings. It's exactly yeah. as I showed to you. Yeah, excellent, excellent. That's good to know. But what about if I have a desktop agent two? Uh, how do I migrate to a desktop agent three? Uh, it's very simple. You just need to uh, go to your Windows settings, you uninstall the previous agent version. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you can install, uh, as I showed during this presentation. You just need to do this action to deinstall the older version. Okay, okay, okay. That that is great. Uh, yeah, we still don't have any additional questions here. Um, so, thank you very much for your time. This this was really good learning about the new agent in the recorder, uh, which greatly simplifies how you do that because. Uh, I remember doing some bots before, but it was like clicking around and I needed to find the name for the particular element. This recording is uh, way, way better. Cool. So we can we can finish our, our stream for today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you everyone who attended um, this uh, session. Uh, there is a session following this, which is starting in 20 minutes from now, um, uh, which, uh, uh, it's an example of how SAP process automation has been used uh, uh, for a fun um, automation uh, created by one of the product management uh, team in um, uh, of SAP process automation. So check that out. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining. See thank ya. you. See you. Excellent. Uh, so I finished uh, the stream. Uh...